dear viewers this is part 4 in the series on cancer the dysneoplasia in the medicine for common man series continuing on the discussion self sufficiency in growth signals the oncogenes oncogenes are mutated genes that cause excessive cell growth even in the absence of growth factors and other growth promoting external cues oncogenes are mutated or overexpressed versions of normal cellular genes which are called proto oncogenes though through a variety of mechanisms these mutations increase or alter the function of oncoproteins which are active and resistant to control by external signals cells expressing oncoproteins are thus freed from normal checkpoints and proliferate excessively alterations in multiple signaling pathways have been identified in neoplasms and many components of these pathways act as oncoproteins when mutated some of the major signaling pathways that regulate cellular behavior are the receptor ty- tyrosine kinase pathway the g protein coupled receptor pathway the hedgehog pathway and the nfkb pathway abnormalities in these pathways are implicated in the development and progression of various cancers the most important oncoproteins and the mechanisms by which they contribute to the autonomous growth of cancer cells are follow dear viewers by the way this educational video is made possible by prescribe on the makers of e prescription software for digital prescriptions available freely for doctors on the website www.prescribeon.com available uh, freely for doctors doctors who are interested in this e prescription can freely avail of its vast collection of more than 100000 e prescriptions oncoproteins and cell growth oncogenes have multiple roles but virtually all encode active oncoproteins that participate in signaling pathways that drive the proliferation of cells proto oncogenes the normal regulated versions of oncogenes may encode growth factors growth factor receptors signal transducers transcription factors or cell cycle components in most instances the corresponding oncogenes encode oncoproteins that serve functions similar to their normal counterparts with the important difference that they are usually active and thereby relieve cells of their normal dependency on growth factors growth factors most growth factors are made by one cell type and act on a neighboring cell of a differing type expressing the appropriate growth factor receptor this is known as paracrine action growth factor receptors a large number of oncogenes encode growth factor receptors of which receptor tyrosine kinases are the most important in cancer hence the mutant receptors deliver mitogenic signals to the cell continuously even in the absence of growth factor in the environment receptor tyrosine kinases are activated in tumors by multiple mechanisms including point mutations gene rearrangements and gene amplifications point mutations of RAS family RAS family genes constitute the most common type of abnormality involving proto oncogenes in human tumors non receptor tyrosine kinases an important example of this oncogenic mechanism involves the abl tyrosine kinase the in chronic myeloid leukemia cml the abl gene is translocated from its normal abode 
on chromosome 9 to chromosome 22 where it fuses with the BCR gene. The resultant fusion gene encodes a shimmeric BCR ABL protein with tyrosine kinase activity. This represents a recurrent story in cancer as many different oncogenic tyrosine kinases consist of shimmeric proteins in which the non-tyrosine kinase partner drives self-association. Note, shimmeric protein, fusion proteins or shimmeric proteins are proteins created through the joining of two or more genes that originally coded for separate proteins. Despite accumulation of mutations in other cancer-associated genes, in chronic myeloid leukemia cells, signaling through the BCR ABL tyrosine kinase is required for most CML tumor cells to proliferate and survive. Hence, in inhibition of its activity is a highly effective therapy. Even though the proliferating component of the tumor is suppressed by BCR ABL inhibitors and the patient seems completely well, rare CML stem cells harboring the BCR ABL fusion gene persist. Apparently because these cells do not require BCR ABL signals for their survival. As a result, therapy with BCR ABL inhibitors must be continued indefinitely. Otherwise, the malignant stem cells spawn rapidly proliferating offspring and the full blown leukemia returns. This outcome highlights a second important concept the existence of stem cell like cells in certain cancers that may be particularly resistant to therapeutic targeting. Transcription factors All signal trans transduction pathways converge on the nucleus where the expression of target genes that orchestrate the cell's orderly advance through the cell cycle is activated. Growth autonomy may also occur as a consequence of mutations affecting transcription factors that regulate the expression of pro-growth genes and cyclines. Transcription factors of this class include the products of the MYC, MYB, JUN, FOS and REL proto-oncogenes. Of these, MYC is most commonly affected in cancer. MYC proto-oncogene The MYC proto-oncogene is expressed in virtually all cells. Under normal circumstances, MYC protein concentrations are tightly controlled at the level of transcription, translation and protein stability and virtually all pathways that regulate growth impinge on MYC. How MYC promoter promotes normal and neoplastic cell growth is incompletely understood. But a multitude of studies have shown that MYC has probably broad activities, several of which contribute not only to deregulated cell growth, but also to several other hallmarks of cancer. MYC can be considered a master transcriptional regulator of cell growth. Indeed, the fastest growing human tumors, such as Burkitt lymphoma, which virtually always bears a chromosomal translocation involving MYC. In some contexts, MYC upregulates expression of telomerase. Telomerase is one of several factors that contribute to the endless replicative capacity, that is the immortalization of cancer cells. MYC is one of a handful of transcription factors that can act to reprogram somatic cells into pluripotent stem cells. Note, pluripotent stem cells, they have the ability of to develop into many different types of cells or tissues in the body. MYC may also contribute to cancer cell stemness 
that is another important aspect of the immortality of cancers. Note, stemness. It refers to the molecular processes underlying the fundamental stem cell properties of self-renewal and generation of differentiated daughter cells. Highly organized and strictly controlled signaling systems regulate these two characteristics of stem cells. Stemness, stemness combines the ability of a cell to perpetuate its lineage, to give rise to differentiated cells, and to interact with its environment to maintain a balance between quiescence, proliferation, and regeneration. Cyclins and cyclin-dependent kinase. Growth factors transduce signals that stimulate the orderly progression of cells through the various phases of the cell cycle, the process by which cells replicate their DNA in preparation for cell division. Progression of cells through the cell cycle is orchestrated by cyclin-dependent kinases, CDKs. The CDK cyclin complexes phosphorylate crucial target proteins that drive cells forward through the cell cycle. Cyclins arouse the cyclin-dependent kinases. CDK inhibitors silence the CDKs and inhibit the cell cycle. This figure 1.5 shows a normal cell which is mostly concerned with the day-to-day -day activities of the cell. That is, this phase is called interphase or the quiescent phase. Occasionally, they divide into two daughter cells for which preparation is required. This phase is G2. After this stage, it enters a mitosis phase consisting of prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase and then enters the quiescent phase. The cell cycle is thus repeated. See figure 1.5 the cell cycle. There are two main cell cycle checkpoints. One at the G1S transition and the other at the G2M transition. Both of which are tightly regulated by a balance of growth promoting and growth suppressing proteins as well as by sensors of DNA damage. If activated, these DNA damage sensors transmit signals that arrest cell cycle progression and if the damage cannot be repaired, initiate apoptosis. Understandably, the defects in the G1S checkpoint are more important in cancer because these not only lead to dysregulated growth but may also impair DNA repair creating a mutator phenotype that enables cancer development and progression. Summary of oncogenes, oncoproteins and unregulated cell proliferation. Proto-oncogenes, these are normal cellular genes whose products promote cell proliferation. Oncogenes, these are mutated or overexpressed versions of proto-oncogenes that function autonomously, having lost dependence on normal growth promoting signals. Oncoprotein, a protein encoded by an oncogene that drives increased cancer cell proliferation, which may result from a variety of aberrations. 1. Mutations in growth factors, tyrosine kinases, or downstream signaling molecules that lead to signaling such as activation of the EGF receptor tyrosine kinase by point mutations as in lung cancer, activation of the HER2 receptor tyrosine kinase by gene amplification as in breast cancer. Note, HER2 proteins are receptors on breast cells. Normally, HER2 receptors help control how a healthy breast cell grows, divides and repairs itself. But in about 10 to 20 percent of breast cancers, the HER2 gene makes too many copies of itself, known as HER2 gene amplification. 3. Activation of the JAK2 tyrosine kinase by point mutations as occurring in myeloproliferative neoplasms. Note, 
myeloproliferative neoplasms are a group of diseases in which the bone marrow makes too many red blood cells, white blood cells or platelets. 4. Activation of the ABL non-receptor tyrosine kinase by chromosomal translocation and creation of a BCR-ABL fusion gene as occurring in chronic myeloid leukemia and acute lymphoblastic leukemia. 5. Increased expression of MYC, a master transcription factor that regulates genes needed for rapid cell growth by deregulation through chromosomal translocations as in Burkitt lymphoma and other hematologic malignancies. 6. Gene amplification as in neuroblastoma. Neuroblastoma, a highly malignant childhood tumor of the sympathetic nervous system, is frequently characterized by MYCN gene amplification and high expression of MYCN and CMYC signature of genes. Cells in a sample of tumor tissue or bone marrow are checked to see how many copies of the MYCN gene are in the tumor DNA. Having more than 10 copies of the gene is called MYCN gene amplification. The CMYC gene serves as a master regulator of cellular metabolism and proliferation. Since it is activated by a large number of oncogenic pathways, and in turn stimulates many of the metabolic changes that result in malignant transformation. It is truly both the chicken and the egg. NMYC amplification is a crucial prognostic factor in neuroblastoma, which is associated with almost all features related with poor prognosis and a higher probability of unfavorable outcome. Insensitivity to growth inhibition, tumor suppressor genes. Whereas oncogenes drive the proliferation of cells, the products of most tumor suppressor genes apply breaks to cell proliferation and abnormalities in these genes lead to failure of growth inhibition, another fundamental hallmark of carcinogenesis. Tumor suppressor proteins control a series of checkpoints that prevent uncontrolled growth. Many tumor suppressors such as RB and P53 are part of a regulator network that recognizes genotoxic stress from any source and responds by shutting down proliferation. See figure 1.5 the cell cycle shown earlier. Indeed, the expression of an oncogene in normal cells with intact tumor suppressor genes leads to questions or permanent cell cycle arrest that is oncogene in these induced senescence rather than uncontrolled proliferation. Ultimately, the growth inhibitory pathways may prod the cells into apoptosis. Another set of tumor suppressors seems to be involved in cell differentiation, causing cells to enter a post-mitotic differentiated pool without replicative potential. Loss of normal cell cycle control is central to malignant transformation and that at least one of the four key regulators of the cell cycle that is P16 bar INK4A, cyclin D, CDK4 and RB is dysregulated in the vast majority of human cancers. The transforming proteins of several oncogenic human DNA viruses also neutralize the growth inhibitory activities of RB. Summary 1. RB retinoblastoma protein. This is the governor of cell cycle. Note the RB protein that is retinoblastoma protein is a tumor suppressor which plays a vital pivotal role in the inhibition of the cell cycle and in tumor progression. It has been shown that RB protein, PRB, is responsible for a major G1 checkpoint blocking S phase entry and cell growth. The anti-proliferative effect of PRB is abrogated in cancers 
through a variety of mechanisms. 2. TP53. This is the guardian of the genome. TP53, a tumor suppressor gene that regulates cell cycle progression, DNA repair, cellular senescence and apoptosis is the most frequently mutated gene in human cancers. P53 is virtually undetectable in normal cells. In stressed cells, however, P53 is released from the inhibitory effects. Once activated, P53 thwarts neoplastic transformation by inducing transient cell cycle arrest, senescence that is permanent cell cycle arrest or programmed cell death that is apoptosis. P53 induced senescence. Senescence is a state of permanent cell cycle arrest. How cells become fixed in the senescence state is unclear. P53 induced apoptosis. Apoptosis of cells with irreversible DNA damage is the ultimate protective mechanism against neoplastic transformation. P53 directs the transcription of several pro-apoptotic genes which are believed to tip the balance in favor of cell death via the intrinsic that is the mitochondrial pathway. What determines whether a cell repairs its DNA, becomes senescent or undergoes apoptosis is uncertain. With loss of P53 function, DNA damage goes unrepaired. Driver mutations accumulate in oncogenes and other cancer genes and the cell marches along a dangerous path leading to malignant transformation. Irradiation and conventional chemotherapy, the two common modalities of cancer treatment, mediate their effects by inducing DNA damage and subsequent apoptosis. Tumors with wild type that is normal TP53 alleles are more likely to be killed by such therapy than tumors with mutated TP53 alleles. See figure 1.6 Oxidative Phosphorylation versus Warburg effect. In most normal tissues, the vast majority of energy is dedicated to carry out day to day functions. In these tissues, ATP is generated by oxidative phosphorylation. Each molecule of glucose releases 36 molecules of high energy phosphate bonds, that is ATP adenosine triphosphate. By contrast, proliferating tumor tissues, especially in the setting of hypoxia, a typical condition within tumors, use aerobic glycolysis to generate energy for cell survival and generation of building blocks and new cells. Growth promoting metabolic alterations, the Warburg effect. See figure 1.6 shown earlier oxidative phosphorylation versus the Warburg effect. Even in the presence of ample oxygen, cancer cells demonstrate a distinctive form of cellular metabolism characterized by high levels of glucose uptake and increased conversion of glucose to lactose, that is fermentation, via the glycolytic pathway. This phenomenon, called the Warburg effect and also known as aerobic glycolysis, has been recognized for many years. At the heart of the Warburg effect lies a simple question. Why is it advantageous for a cancer cell to rely on seemingly inefficient glycolysis, which generates two molecules of ATP per molecule of glucose, instead of oxidative phosphorylation, which generates 36 molecules of ATP per molecule of glucose? While pondering this question, it is important to recognize that rapidly growing normal cells, such as in embryonic tissues, also rely on aerobic fermentation. Thus, Warburg metabolism is not cancer-specific, but instead 
is a general property of growing cells that is exploited by cancer cells. The answer to this riddle is surprisingly simple. Aerobic glycolysis provides rapidly dividing tumor cells with metabolic intermediates that are needed for the synthesis of cellular components whereas mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation does not. The reason growing cells rely on aerobic glycolysis becomes readily apparent when, consider, when one considers that a growing cell has a strict biosynthetic requirement. It must duplicate all of its cellular components, DNA, RNA, proteins, lipids and organelles before it can divide and produce two daughter cells. Recall that the net effect of oxidative phosphorylation is to take a molecule of glucose and combine it with six molecules of oxygen to produce six molecules of water and six molecules of carbon dioxide which are lost through respiration. Thus, while pure oxidative phosphorylation yields abundant ATP, it fails to produce any carbon moieties that can be used to build cellular components that are needed for growth, that is manufacture of proteins, lipids and nucleic acids. So dear readers, this video is part 4 in the series on cancer that is neoplasia in the medicine for common man series. Thank you for watching the video.